Boom, I'm in the room. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Old Hill Manor and uh, live on a Saturday. This is me, Lord Hill, coming at you um, live. <laughs> so, what have we been up to this week? Well, we've been up, done a few things this week. We've been a bit busy. So, what happened? Um, I can't remember now. <laughs> I've had a busy old week. I think Monday, Monday I was at, uh, I had my hearing test done, and um, I think that was Monday. Tuesday, I did something on Tuesday. Oh yeah, <laughs> Tuesday. We went and bought a van. So, uh, Lady Hill, she decides she wants to uh, trade her car in and get a camper van. So she saw this one, um, just down the road from here, advertised. Looked quite good money. I mean, it was, it was really cheap in comparison to, to most of the old Doobry Watsits, the old camper vans. So she, <laughs> we went along and had a look at it. <laughs> They offered us a really good price for the car. Uh, and she only had to put uh, a few grand in that she had in her savings. So she's now, we went and picked it up on um, on Thursday. So now she's got herself a camper van. Yesterday, Friday, I went to uh, up to the smoke. I went up to the XL, to the uh, London Bike Show. Um, the guy that's buying my bike off of me, he got the ticket to get in uh, for free. Um, I booked. I booked a train. It well in advance. Eight pound forty five return. Thought that's not bad. So it turns out at, at Fairham Station yesterday morning, uh, sort of just after seven, there's a bus replacement. So the bus replacement took us to Haven't. There was nothing going up to Victoria because there'd been an incident at uh, Free Bridges. So I had to get on a southwest train and uh, come into London to Victoria. Uh, to, instead of going to Victoria, I went into Waterloo. So from Waterloo, then Minster Ant got down to the XL, got in there just after 10 o'clock. And um, what I did, I did a video. I did, I did two videos in there. Um, I interviewed a guy uh, on the bike track stand. Now, if you're a motorcyclist and you, you cherish your motorbike and you haven't got one of these bike tracks on and it gets nicked, you've got no chance of getting it back. You get one of these bike tracks on there and as soon as the bike moves, without you turning the ignition on, it alerts them, they call you. If it's not you that's moved the bike, then they can, you have to get out of the old bill, tell them your bike's just been nicked, they'll give you a crime number, get onto them and they'll track it down for you. And they've got a 90, over 90% success rate of recovery with bike track. So, if you paid a few bob for your bike and you don't want to lose it, or you're in a dodgy area, a bike track makes so much sense. And then I did a, a walk around. I, I took the old, uh, the old 360 camera and I had a walk around the show uh, and I put a video up, just a, a quick, just a quick walk around, just to give you a, a flavor of what the bike show's about. Now, to say I was a little bit disappointed, eh, yeah, it's nowhere near the size of the XL, uh, the, the NEC up in Birmingham. The bike shop in, at the NEC is massive. It's huge and really worth going to. London Bike Show, unless you're local, um, yeah, it's not quite so. But that was it. That was uh, that was the London Bike Show. Anyway, if you are out there watching, 
um, give us a thumbs up and say hello. Just ping and say hello. Because <laughs> otherwise I'm just flogging myself to death, aren't I? <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's what life's all about, isn't it? It's all about doing stuff. So do you like what I do or live from the old Hill Manor on a Saturday afternoon? If so, let us know. If you're doing it on catch up, still put a comment in, you can still like it. And if you haven't already done so, it's free to subscribe to the channel. It don't cost you nothing, does it? So what else is happening? Well, this coming week, I'm gonna have to have a big, big box of it, big box of it on my side, Kleenex tissues, because uh, Monday, going to get the old multi-starter, MOT'd. Tuesday, he's coming to pick it up. It's gonna be a wrench. It's gonna be a real wrench. I've had that bike now for four year, 14 years. 14 years I've had her. She's been a great bike. The old multi-starter, oh, I've done some miles on it. I've been a few places. But it's got to the stage where it's getting a little bit too big and heavy for me. That's the only reason that I've taken the command decision to get rid of her. Else I would have kept her. But this new Royal Enfield Himalayan, the 450, the latest one with the, the Sherpa engine, which is the water-cooled engine, double the horsepower of the old one, really, really friendly and easy to ride. Now, <laughs> I was talking to a guy yesterday who's uh, from Royal Enfield, and he was saying that there's, there's a, a couple of containers coming in on the first ship, and they're gonna be all the bikes that are going to the dealers as demonstrators. And then there's another ship following it round with a load more containers with all the first lot of deliveries that people have paid the deposits on. I've been one of them. So I'm gonna be one of the first in the country to actually get one uh, as a, an owner. Really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it, and I've got some stuff coming. I'm, the channel's going to the channel's going to evolve a little bit uh, over this year. I'm still going to be doing the old uh, everyday conversations regarding mental health on a Thursday evening. Sometimes it'll be recorded one going out if I'm off doing something else, or it um, it'll be the live show and I'll have guests on and we'll we'll have a parlay about different aspects of mental well-being, trying to get everybody, um, yes, taking the stigma out of mental well-being, taking it, the stigma out of mental health. It's okay not to be okay. That's what we're pushing. That's the message that we're trying to get out there. Oh, I know, talking about mental health. I had a, I went up to Marlow to, to see Big Phil Campion and I was a guest on his show, and that was on Tuesday. And uh, we got around to talking about mental health and all the rest of it. So hopefully he's going to push some people my way um, to to come on the show, which would be great. We'll have some more Brits on the show. We've had lots of Americans in the past, but I'm going to try and bring it around to, to having Brits on the show. Um, as for... Ordinary people's extraordinary stories. I'll do one or two. Um, I'm not going to be as prolific as I was. Afternoon, Richard. How are you doing, mate? I'm just having a bit of a chat on a Saturday afternoon because I can. The rugby was good last week. No, it wasn't. I lie like a cheap Japanese swatch. Last week's rugby, I found a bit scrappy. All three games was a bit scrappy, I thought. There was, particularly England. I mean, that was that was a tough old game. Yeah, they the both teams just seemed to be very very nervous, uh, and just didn't get out of blocks properly. 
but that's that. So I'm just talking about how I'm going to be evolving the, the, the channel this year. So I'm going to carry on with the Thursday's everyday conversations regarding mental health. Ordinary people's extraordinary stories, I'll do one or two as they come along. I'm not going to be pushing it as hard as I, I have done in the last couple of years. Uh, I'm just taking a... It takes a toll. It's, it's hard doing it all the time. But once I get a new bike, then I'm going to be doing some series on that. I've got... Already the first one's gone out. It's... Uh, Royal Enfield, start the Royal Enfield Himalayan journey. So I'm going to carry on that theme uh, throughout the rest of the, uh, for, for the next few months. When I get the bike, i um, going to do a handover video. So what happens when you, once you've, we've done ordering it uh, and the process that we go through that, then we're going to talk about uh, when I pick the bike up and how they do the handover. Then I'm going to do the, the, the first, uh, owner's first ride review and do the first 300 miles. When I take it back, hopefully they're going to let me into the workshop uh, when the guy's doing the first service on it. Because he has to have the first service at 300 miles for some reason. So hopefully that'll go on. And then we're going to start doing little trips out on it. Um, so I've got the big trip planned for June and I'm going to be away pretty much all of June going with a couple of mates um, over to France on the 1st of June we're going to do um, some bits around the Normandy beaches um, that, that'll be the, the riding through history stuff then we're going to go um, head across country uh, via Compiègne to see where the, the armistice was signed and all that sort of thing then we're going to go across to Baden Baden, pick up the National 500. And we're going to do that. And then we're going to go across then into Switzerland to do the, the Grimsel Pass. Then we're going to come back over to possibly Nuremberg, do bits around there. And then we've got been to Munich for around about the 7th of June. So going to be a busy, busy few days there because uh, we've got somebody joining us on the 8th. Then we're going to go and, go, go and do the, the Gross Glockner. Um, and then we're going to do Berkshire Garden and the Eagle's Nest. This is all part of the history bit. And then the guys, they're going to be heading north and I'm going to be heading south-east. I'm going to go down into uh, Slovenia and then I'm going to come across then into Hungary, up into the Czech Republic, pop into Poland and then come across to Berlin. Going to spend a couple of days in Berlin doing some stuff there. Go and look where I used to live and look at the, see if I can get into the camp and bits and pieces. Um, and then I'm going to be heading back across into um, Holland and I think I'm going to come back via the hook to Harwich. Once we get back, I've got a couple of days to turn around and then I'm off to the Adventure Bike Riders Festival. Now, if you're a motorcyclist with a little bit of adventure or you just like festivals with great music, this one is great music with a difference. You've got the motorbikes there. And I've been in the last couple of years. Now, the difference between the Bike Riders Festival and Glastonbury, when everybody packed up and left, or leaves, you don't see a huge amount of rubbish left behind. Unlike Glastonbury, it takes them a month to clear the, clear the site from all the crap that they leave behind. Different mentality, you see. Motorcyclists, respect. Uh, what else? Oh, we've got some writing on there. <laughs> I'm going to go and have a quick look at what you said. Need to put the old, uh, put the bins on for that. Um, under 18 Premiership Finals tomorrow, yes. Uh, UU uh, Saints v Bath last evening. Uh, final from Gloucester. Sounds like uh, your French trip is well planned and should 
be a fantastic, yes, absolutely. No, I haven't. <laughs> Accommodation. Now, previous experience, what I do is um, I look for accommodation on the route. So the day, I, I, I try and book the accommodation on the day, or if I just see a hotel, boom, into that. That's the way that I do traveling around, because you never know where they're gonna be. Um, so you let, by lunch, when you stop at lunchtime, that's when I start having a quick look at where I'm gonna to get to and see what hotels on booking.com or Airbnb or um, Overlander, uh, and then try and get into somewhere like that. That's how I, that's how I go about finding accommodation. Um, as for a great experience, yes. I'm really looking forward to it. I've got a few other things planned beforehand, obviously. I'm gonna be going up to, um, when I nip up to the National Memorial Arboretum, I've only been there the once and that was on Ride to the Wall. Um, but it's difficult to see lots of stuff when you've got so many people there. Uh, there was about seven or 8,000 motorbikes up there the last time I went. So um, I think we're gonna have a, a day out uh, with the camper van. Because <laughs> apparently you're allowed to take dogs on there. So we'll, we'll have a, a, a day out and a night over, night stop over. Up in the middle of there somewhere. So that's one of the plans, but on the bike, um, yeah, I've got a few things planned where I want to go off and, and, and do some bike rides. So a lot of the channel this year is going to be bike ride uh, orientated. So watch out for some of that stuff. What else we got going on? What happened with the, I thought the regiment was going to put something on this year to go to um, Monte Cassino, but I haven't seen anything at all on it. So I don't know whether you've heard anything or whether they've not managed to pull it off. Or whether they're going to do the Normandy beaches instead, because it's the 80th anniversary. And it'll probably be the last time you'll see um, Normandy veterans there. But I know there's, there's, there's a lot planned. I know, I know that the, the Yacht Club, they're planning on going across, a uh, little flotilla going across for the ASA and the Royal Naval Sailing Association, they're going to go across as well. And they're going to sort of have about a, 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 about a score, about 20 odd boats I think they're planning on taking. I would have done that, but on my way on the bike, <laughs> we would have beat them to it. So what else is happening around the, the bazaars at the moment? Have we got some uh, Interesting stuff going on. There was a by elections this week in um, in Wellingborough and, and Kingswood. Now, although uh, reform didn't win the seats, they made a massive impact, which was a positive to take away. Now, my thinking is, there was a pretty poor turnout. I mean, 30%, I mean, that's nothing, is it? And labourers saying, oh, what a fantastic victory and all that. Mainly because Tory voters didn't turn out because they don't like the Tories are doing. But I can't understand, particularly for Wellingborough, which was a leave uh, area back in 2016 when we had the vote, why, why they put Labour in? I don't, that, that just doesn't compute with me. It's surely if they're trying to punish the, the Tories, they would put reform in. Anyway, <laughs> it, it'll be a different, different kettle of fish come the, uh, come the general election. And if we get a Labour government, well, <laughs> it's on to batten down the hatches because, yeah, they'll bankrupt the country. Anyway, let's stay off politics. I'll let Horace talk about politics. Have, um, have you seen Horace Podmore? He's a political commentator. 
he's not afraid to talk about stuff if you <laughs> if you want to go down that route have a, have a watch of him he's quite amusing but uh, for me yeah the old carcass is playing up a bit um my my hips getting a little bit worse at the moment so i don't know whether it's something to do with the the rheumatoid or whether it's just osteo that, but yeah hips are playing up something rotten at the moment i had a, a massage on thursday um and it's eased, eased it off a bit but anyway enough of that for me catch up with us next week don't forget thursday uh, everyday conversations regarding mental health next saturday is the royal anglian big breakfast 24. now i've got about uh at the moment about a dozen people coming to gosport so if you're in the area if you're in the solent area and you want to come along to the uh, royal anglian big breakfast in in uh, gosport ping me a message and I'll get you put on the list to get in to the guard room. Other than that, have a great week and I'll catch up with you again when I come live from the old Hill Manor next Saturday afternoon time and I'll tell you how the old big breakfast went. So, that's it. Yes, yes, we're there. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Hey! So until next week, TTFN. Ta-ta for now.